Welcome ladies and gentlemen, Commodity TV at the Edelmetallmesse Precious Metal Fair here in Munich. And with me here is once again more time Alex Langer, the Vice President of Corporate Development of Millennial Lithium. Alex, welcome. Thank you so much, Jochen. Happy to be here. Yeah, great to have you here again. Uh, I mean, uh, we have been on the road several weeks ago. It was really impressive. I really like your company, honestly, and uh, great job you have done so far. Thank you very much. Um, but I think you had some very nice developments. Maybe you can comment a bit. You did a great financing. You are still, again, seeking for money, the resources out. Maybe elaborate a bit in that order. Absolutely. Happy, uh, happy to walk you through it. So uh, we went out to raise $5 million. It was led by Canaccord Genuity out of Canada, and we ended up having demand for over $15 million. Wow, well, that's uh, three times more. Three times more. So we ended up taking 11 and a half. Uh, we capped it because it, it was enough dilution at those levels. And obviously, uh, you know, our share price has more than doubled that price in the last month. So it was a good idea to take what we needed at the time. What was really, really interesting are the new groups that came in in that financing. So we uh, we brought in Sprott, who people know. Oops, okay. Yeah. Uh, wow. We have the largest lithium fund in the world who's uh, maintained the position, so they're still at 10%, and a group out of Hong Kong as well. Uh-oh, the yeah. Asians. Uh -oh. Uh, it was quite interesting for sure. So they, they came in for a million, and they're actually trying to increase their position right now. So we're just discussing that with them, and uh -huh. they want 10%, and it's nothing to do with offtake. It's just equity. They just want to make money like the rest of us. Super. Well, perfect. You have been in uh, China lately. Maybe yeah. you can give us a bit of an insight it into, was, uh, let's say, Chinese markets, lithium. What is, what's going on there? I mean, the, the the, the e-mobility must be phenomenal there. I, I have never seen anything like it. It was, it was absolutely crazy. So I spent three weeks with both our chairman and our CEO. Uh, we were in China. We were in Shanghai, all around uh, Shanghai. We were in Tokyo. We were in Hong Kong and Australia. Just a couple of anecdotes from uh, from the trip. Uh, we were picked up one morning in a, in a you know beautiful Mercedes car, and they, uh, they drove us two and a half hours away to a battery plant that they had just completed. One of the biggest things I've ever seen in my life. Ready to go, non-operation because they don't have lithium. Jesus. And what is what, what, what is the mode there with the battery? I mean, we always speak about like 10 new giga factories in China. Is that enough or is it even more? It's more. It, it is really, really more. It's the only way they're going to be able to curb their pollution is EVs. Yeah. So the government is full behind it. It was part of their five-year plan. Companies that you wouldn't think are getting into the EV space. We met another company, a massive solar production company, the second largest in the world. They are developing full electric hybrid vehicles with solar panel roofs, solar panel charging stations. They have an agreement with one of the three major US auto firms. They can do everything from the beginning to the end. The only thing they don't have is lithium. So what will this mean then for the, let's say, future of the energy metals mix, I would call it? Like, you need lithium, you need cobalt, cobalt you need right. battery graphite, you need copper. For Absolutely. sure, because Absolutely. you need to wire that stuff, yeah? You, you need a, a bit of zinc, a bit of lead, a bit of silver oxide, yeah? What's your feeling? I mean, demand must soar. It, it has to. It has to. I know for Chinese and the copper, they have a, a good grasp on their future supply. But lithium, cobalt, nickel, these are the three that they're most keen on. It's amazing. It, it truly, truly is. Uh, we came back with you know five groups that are interested in you know doing a deal Oops. at an early stage. We don't even have the 43101 out. Yeah, exactly. It, when, however, when, it will be when will it come? in the next few weeks. So we stopped drilling actually last week. Okay. Uh, we cut them off. Uh, we should expect you know those results very very soon and we're quite excited it's going to be very substantial it's going to be one of the largest in the world and from there if it's positive which we hope it will be uh, we'll move on to the PA which we've started and that'll be completed early early next year yeah and you have the money to do that that's important we do, yeah we're well financed for that um, we will need approximately 30 million dollars to complete the full feasibility study yeah so you will finance on those prices now maybe 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 higher um, we have clear line of sight on that financing people are very interested with the management team we have obviously with Farhad joining who's you know had over yeah, two Farhad, billion dollars with the sensational yeah. transactions over the last few years yeah. so uh, with him leading the charge it, everything looks really really bright absolutely so the plan would be like go in production by yourself or let's say maybe we get a strategic partner or if if the price is right we sell the whole thing exactly so, so we make money for the shareholders That's in the bottom way. line, yeah. So it, we're doing what's called a dual track towards. Uh, we're planning to go into production at 10,000 tons per annum. Uh, CapEx on that is roughly 200 million. 
So definitely reasonable, for sure. For a company of our size, we feel we could probably do 50% 50, 50 of that in equity, 50% yeah. in debt. So we've actually started to reach out to those groups. Uh, there'll probably be a bit of an offtake tied to that as well. But it's a number that we are very comfortable with. Uh, of course, when you start mining, there's always issues that things come up. So we want to make sure at the 10,000 ton per stage level that we have everything running smoothly. From there, we can easily increase it you know, 20, 25, even 30,000 tons. The resource is going to be so robust that it could easily take 30,000 tons per year. So if there was a group out there, let's say a strategic, that uh, you know liked our project, you know saw that it was working, they want much more than 10,000 tons. Even this battery plant I saw, tiny battery plant, 17,000 tons per year. So when, when you've been in China and you see all those developments, what is your feeling about the worldwide demand development for lithium? Because we, we see prognosis like 500,000 tons, then I heard from, uh, what was, I think Deutsche Bank Goldman Sachs, around 800,000 to a million by 2025. So what do you think? Yeah, I like to be on the conservative end of that. Uh, right now it's using 220,000 tons. But when I see these plants that are completely empty, ready to go, it, it starts to make you think. In our presentation, we use a Goldman Sachs, which is about 560. And that's before Mercedes, before Volkswagen, before any of these groups yeah, announced that, yeah. that they were going to have all these vehicles ready for 2020. Yeah. <sighs> You know, I was uh, just with Canaccord, who I used to work with in Australia, and they saw our chart, and they're like, you guys are so far low, it's not even funny. So their prediction is 800,000. Wow. And oh, that's four times more from today almost, yeah. So uh, I am uh, updating the presentation for those numbers, but uh, I think that's, that's probably where it will be. As you are directly in the lithium market involved, um, what are the prices these days? I heard something of $26,000 yes, a ton. I'm saying $25,000, $26,000 wow, per ton. That's a lot. Yeah, when we look at you know, the last 10 years, at medium pricing being six to 7000 it's incredible. Now, forward contracts are 13000 ish per ton. So it's, uh, it's amazing in terms of the pricing that's happening right now. Now, there is expected uh, new streams to come online and other people increasing their production, which should hopefully alleviate some of those that pricing. But again, we're in brines. We're predicting a cost between $3,500 and $3,800 hundred dollars per ton, which uh, we can you know, easily work within a fluctuation of the market. Super. Perfect. Well, Alex, that sounds very compelling. All the best for that. And we look forward on your news flow Absolutely. as we will uh, definitely report about that. And I would say keep it going and nail them. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that was Alex Langer, the Vice President Corporate Development of Millennial Lithium. And you heard that he was just in China and visited battery factories. And it looks like the demand is much, much higher higher than even their conservative estimates. And uh, it is uh, not only a trend, it's an evolution which we have in the mobility for the future. E-vehicles are definitely the thing that you want to have, you need to have in China when you want to solve the pollution issues they have. And uh, yeah, lithium is one of the metals aside of cobalt they need. So the demand is there. The companies are there, like Medangle. Check it out. Thanks for watching us. Bye-bye from Munich.